time. Childhood cancer is set to be discussed in Parliament early next week. I think it's Tuesday. This is thanks to one little girl's campaign for change. Well, Sophie Farrell was diagnosed with a rare form of incurable cancer when she was just nine years old. Sadly, Sophie died in September, age 10. But before she died, she made a bucket list. Well, on that list was to visit the This Morning Studios, which she achieved last year, and uh, to change the way children with cancer are treated and cared for. Well, today we're joined by Sophie's mum, Charlotte, who will be attending Parliament in the hope that Sophie's final wishes come true. And good morning, and thank you for being morning. here. And I'm so sorry for the loss of Sophie. She was a gorgeous little girl who I was lucky enough to, to speak to when she came here into the studio. Um, just explain what she was like for anyone that, that didn't know Sophie. What sort of girl was she? She was a really positive, happy, always had a smile on her face. Mm. Um, very friendly, bubbly, just full of life. She would light a room up and I think lots of people have said you just wouldn't have forgotten her if you'd yeah. met her. She was just that sort of character. One of those girls, yeah. yeah. And in July 2020, she started to feel unwell. Um, yeah. what, what happened? Um, she was just complaining of stomach pains, um, feeling sick, um, struggling to eat from in the morning when she woke up. Um, and that was on and off um, from July, quite more consistent in August. Um, and then she started bleeding and um, we'd seen the GP before that, um, but we were told it was other things. Well, they said it could um, be her period, which of yeah, so when that's she's... not what it was. It yeah. wasn't at all. And you sort of had to fight really to get a diagnosis. You knew as a mother something wasn't quite right, but still on your radar, cancer wasn't there. You didn't think that it was that? No. Um, you hear about that cancer, childhood cancer is rare. Um, so you think, I think as a parent, if it's rare, it's never going to happen to us. You know, you think of all the other signs and yeah. symptoms and think, oh, it'll be other things. Um, now I know it's one in 450 children that mm -hmm. get childhood cancer. Um, I would have probably been differently. And I think yeah. if I'd known the signs and symptoms, she had some of the real red flags um, of them. And I what know... What were they? Um, so the bleeding, abnormal bleeding is definitely a red flag. Um, stomach pains and consistent sort of pains in the stomach was another one um, of that. And that feeling of nausea and pers the persistence of it, um, because we know all children feel sick, yeah. but it's the persistence of it. Um, and those were all flags, but I didn't know the signs and symptoms. And I think, as I asked lots of people, do you know if your child presented we had cancer would you know the signs and symptoms to look out for well you knew as holly just said then as a mum you know something's not right this isn't right and you've yeah. gone to the gp and you you were unhappy with the way that that had been diagnosed you took it to a and e and you got your diagnosis yeah what did they tell you so they found they asked me um, in the hospital how long she had this lump for and i said what lump um and they found a 12 centimeter tumor in her abdomen um so yeah, it's. I mean, abdomen is a quite a tricky area to yeah. obviously locate. Cause... And, it's, uh, and then she's she's rushed into surgery uh, and she's operated upon, and then uh, then you are given the news because of COVID. You're on your own. Um, yeah. so you had to go through. But I can't imagine how horrific yeah, that was to go yeah. through that as a mum. Uh, in she's in recovery, and you've been told what? They came and told, said to me that it's cancer, but, um, and they have managed to remove 95% of the tumour but they couldn't remove it all. And um, so then we started the treatment mm -hmm. with chemo. And the treatment was grueling. I mean, chemo, radiotherapy, this is really tough on her little body. Extraordinary, as so many children facing something like this, so positive the whole time, keeping a smile on her face. And it must have been so tough for her to do that. But something that kept her spirits buoyant was focusing on this bucket list. Yeah, so she wrote that a bit later on, um, but she definitely, her positivity all the way through, she was quite adamant that they were going to make her better. Mm. Um, that's what she kept saying, that, you know, doctors, they make you better, and I know that they will for me. Um, so she was just had that positive outlook all the way through. Um, well, she, didn't she raise, there weren't enough toys in the water, so she raised £6,000 to... Yeah, so toys. she painted ceramics whilst in hospital because um, she wanted more toys and activities in hospital. Yeah. So she raised £6,000 selling ceramics. So the bucket list, she wanted to... Uh, many, many things she wanted to do. One of the things was to come here on this morning, which she did. Yeah. She came in to sit on the sofa, and, and this is the moment when she came in. Um, I got to speak to her as well. It was during the summer, so, so we were away. Um, 
But more importantly than any of that, the thing that was on this bucket list was this cha making a change for other children with cancer, to make a change, to make things easier for the families. And there was, there was two things on here. One was awareness and one was about simple meals for families that were visiting their children in hospital. Yeah, she wanted his parents to be fed. She kept saying to me, why aren't you being fed, Mum? You're here, you don't have a choice to be here because you're here because I'm ill. Mm. Um, why are they not feeding you? Um, and she just couldn't understand that. And we've... Because you were with her all the time and then when you had to go and get something to eat, you had to leave her on her own. And she didn't want to be left. No, which was part of the problem. That, um, so we've got, I know that there's parents out there right now that won't be eating because they won't be able to leave Legend. or they financially can't afford to leave, yeah. um, eat in hospital. And so when you go to Parliament next Tuesday, um, and it was, I think it was going to be tomorrow, but um, yeah. circumstances have moved that down the road a little bit, um, what is it that you are specifically asking for? What, what are the things? So we want children, um, the way that they are diagnosed, we want them quicker. Um, a lot of children are diagnosed stage three and four. Um, they need to be diagnosed quicker. We know that the outcomes for children, if they're diagnosed earlier, are better. Mm -hmm. um, we want a national campaign on the signs and symptoms of childhood cancer so that the public are aware, um, alongside training for GPs and nurse mm -hmm. practitioners, because once they qualify, there is no current course on childhood cancer that they can access. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a huge loophole yeah. um, in that. She, um, she died on the 18th of September at home with you all. Um, and Holly had given her a tiara, which she put on the top of the coffin, and, uh, mm -hmm. and the, the funeral was online, and a massive amount of people watched. Were you surprised by this incredible outpouring of love and support for her? Yeah, uh, we never expected that um, at all. Um, we started, obviously I started writing a blog about our um, journey, and that was just to let our friends and family um, know what was happening, and it spiralled obviously much bigger to what it is now. Mm. Um, but it, it gave us comfort. It gave us yeah, that, actually, yeah. she said all the way when she first started, um, when I asked her about the blog, and she said, yes, I want to be famous. Um, and it felt like she got that, probably yeah. for the wrong or, reasons. Yes. It felt but like... Also, but also, what she's for going the, to do exactly will be for the, the legacy, right reasons. For the right reasons. Yeah, and that's what we are so determined to try and achieve. Yeah. Uh, I don't want any parent to be in our position to have to sit and watch their child die knowing that had research been happened, had investment been put in for um, cancer, there's been so little change in the sarcomas and brain tumours um, in decades, and this has to start changing. How are um, Amelia and Lucy, your other girls? Um, they're coping in different ways. I mean, they're... You know, I've got a 15-year-old and a 9-year-old, so they cope in different ways anyway. Um, my 9-year-old, Amelia, is probably struggling the most outwardly. Um, she, you know, it's a really hard thing to see your sister mm. there and then see them die and then mm. be left, so it's, yeah, really tough. Well, send them all our love when you give them all a big kiss from us here. And, um, and thank you. We wish you the best of luck when you go into Parliament next week. Thank you. You've got this. Thank you. Um, a reminder, if you are worried about any symptoms your child is displaying, please do see your GP. And if you are here, as we've been discussing, unhappy uh, with the way your GP has reacted, then go again or ask to see another one. Um, it's uh, quite important that we talk about you know, those instincts that you have as a mum or a dad. That yeah, you think something's that. not right here. You've got to push for it. If you've been affected by anything we've been discussing just now, please go to our website or app where you'll find details of organisations that may be able to help.